So uh, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Thierry Carrez. I work for the OpenStack Foundation. And I want to introduce the Le Bon Coin team here. Hi. Hi. But, <laughs> Uh, so I'm Sonia Ouchtar, this is Guillaume Chenuet, and this is Benoit Bezac. And uh, we work in Le Bon Coin in the engineering productivity team. So basically we are taking care of the CI, the CD, and any developer, any tools that can ease the work of the developers. So to, to start things off, I wanted to give you a quick perspective on the history of the tooling we've been using for, for OpenStack had the chance to be at the, the very start of the project, and it evolved a lot, and I think it gives perspective on the type of tooling we've been building, and seeing it adopted beyond OpenStack is, is really awesome. Um, so once upon a time, we started from day zero with getting in OpenStack, which is the idea that uh, no human should ultimately merge the changes onto the code repository, but you need to have a machine do it and check a number of things for you. Um, from day zero, we were using tooling that was uh, built on uh, Ubuntu tooling, so Launchpad was used for code review, and we used a piece of software called Tarmac, which some people in the room might still remember off fondly, uh, that was doing a very, very basic serial getting. Uh, and by that, I mean it would check that you provide a commit message, I think, and uh, would run very, very basic checks on your, uh, on your uh, approved change. It's once the human approves the patch, it would go through Tarmac for these tests, and then Tarmac would also merge the branch ultimately into the BZDAR repository, which you also might remember of, uh, was the distributed VCS that Ubuntu um, and, and Canonical was, was supporting. So that worked well in 2010, but uh, early 2011, we wanted to have more tests, and there are so many good ways to integrate tests into, into Tarmac. So we, we started introducing Jenkins here to provide more complete serial getting, so we'd be able to run a body of tests on every approved change to make sure that everything was all, all right there. Um, and Tarmac would still be used, called from Jenkins, to uh, do the merging of the branch. Uh, another benefit, side benefit of using Jenkins here is that it would watch the BZDR repository for changes and we would have the ability to also run jobs once the change merged. So all the post jobs, uh, post merge jobs would be, would be defined starting from that uh, early 2011 period. During 2011, we migrated from uh, using Launchpad and BZDR to using Garrett and Git. And so that changes slightly the, the perspective because we could rely on a stronger integration between Garrett and Jenkins through the Jenkins Garrett plugin. And so that led us add tests that check tests that would run on every proposed change. That was a really uh, uh, changing experience for the OpenStack developers. They wouldn't run the tests locally anymore to, uh, to be able to uh, detect issues. They would just throw the patch to the th system and the system would report issues with it, which uh, given the complexity that OpenStack started to reach around that time was really uh, the, only way to, the only way forward. And uh, obviously Jenkins would also uh, be connected to Garrett in terms of post-merge activities. So we would have post-merge jobs uh, based on, on uh, Garrett events as well. On day three, so by the end of 2011, the problem is OpenStack was growing really, really fast, and we were hitting the limits of uh, serial getting. Our tests were running for about an hour, uh, and that meant that we could not land more than around 24 patches on the main pipeline every day. So you may have seen in the keynotes that we're currently running around 282 changes per day, so you can have an idea of how much uh, of a problem we are having by being limited to 24. So Zool introduced a completely new padding to solve that problem, because we were, by the end of 2011, we were basically stuck. Like The getting system was blocking uh, the, the project velocity. So there were talks, oh, we should just dump it, stop doing tests, uh, this is the only way to, get, to move forward, and, and that's where, where Jim uh, and Monty and others uh, came up with, with concept of speculative getting that let us uh, go f uh, manage to run uh, a, a larger number of changes. We don't do parallel 
getting. We don't like throw parallel tests. We check that they are actually can land on top of one another, which uh, uh, avoids introducing regressions. So that's always key to uh, enabling the velocity that OpenStack st still has today. Uh, and from that day, it was like automate all the things. We started to apply that padding to everything we did. Uh, documentation is built from, from Sphinx. Uh, we do release requests now through a Git repository with jobs that are run on Zool to uh, actually do the tagging and the, the publication of the releases. We also automate release notes through uh, Reno, and we'll, uh, we'll uh, also cover that during the talk. Uh, we have release highlights now, uh, the top three things on top of your mind on a project to try to shape the release messaging. This is all driven from changes that are made to Git repositories and that are collected through this, uh, through this system. But I won't um, uh, steal the spotlight any longer and let the Le Boncoin team explain how they took this tooling that we built for OpenStack and use it uh, uh, elsewhere, which is awesome. Okay, thank you. So let's start about a quick, with a quick introduction uh, of what is Le Boncoin, because Le Boncoin is not uh, really famous outside France. So in France, we are really attached to flea markets, to classify ads market. So the idea was to connect uh, people, to allow them to exchange uh, second-hand items. So Le Boncoin was created uh, 11 years ago with, with this idea. Uh, by the way, if you wonder about the meaning of Le Boncoin in French, it could be translated to something like uh, a, good, a good opportunity around the corner. So today, Le Boncoin is still evolving, is still growing, and still trying to give their users the best experience possible. So let's have a quick look at some numbers for Le Boncoin. And let's see how important uh, this website is for us. Uh, Le Boncoin, it's 20 million of unique users per month. It means it, it's almost half of the total French population. One in two French people is going to Le Boncoin each month. Uh, there is currently an average of 20, 000, uh, 20 million ads on the website and a creation of 800,000 of ads per day. It means that, for example, this is the beginning of the presentation. It's uh, almost like 500 ads that have been created on the website. It's also the fifth most visited website in France uh, behind Google, Facebook, YouTube, and Wikipedia, which makes it the first, the most visited French website. So it's kind of a big responsibility to take care of all these users and give them the best experience possible. So we needed to, to build a very strong CI accordingly to, to these numbers. So let's start with an overview of the CI. Um, most of our 150 developers are working on a Gerrit, so they create around 70,000 patch sets uh, per month for, yeah, sorry for almost 500 reviews, which, which uh, it's almost three patch sets uh, per reviews. Uh, These 5,000 reviews leads to the build of 16,000 packages. Um, some of these packages are built for testing purpose, but uh, most of them will be uh, deployed to our different environments, QA, staging, production, and it's, it leads to the deployment of 20,000 packages. So we recently switched to microservices, so that's why we have a lot of packages to deploy. Um, to take care of all this CI, the CI, we are a team of seven numbers currently, the engineering productivity team. So now I will let Sonia tell you a little more about how this CI has been built. Yes, so let's talk about the Le Boncoin Odyssey. Uh, because uh, we will talk about the monsters we encountered uh, for our CI and how we sharpened our tools uh, thanks to OpenStack. So during uh, the four years of the team, uh, we always try to keep it simple, to be coherent and to be, the, to be more maintainable every year. So we will talk about the CI evolution since the beginning of the team. You may wonder why we present only four years, because Le Boncoin is 11 years old, but it's because the team didn't exist before that. So we will present our journey year by year. So it's 2015, it's the beginning, and we only have two things. Uh, the engineering productivity team has been created, Thanks to a huge demand from the backend team, they wanted to improve their quality. 
So we introduced Gerrit so that it can improve the quality of their code thanks to uh, code reviews. And also Jenkins, so they can improve the quality of their features thanks to more testing of their features before the integration. Um, yes. But uh, yeah, previously you saw that we were still missing, missing some stuff. We were still um, using uh, the UI to uh, configure our Jenkins jobs. And uh, obviously, there was not enough things. So now we introduced uh, tools for the documentation, like Reno and Sphinx, and uh, Git review to ease the use of uh, Garrett, and the uh, Jenkins job builder for the jobs description. So uh, Reno, um, to explain more, it's a release not a tool where you write uh, YAML files uh, listing the new features you want to add in your, in your code, uh, the upgrade notes, etc. So it was a, a quick win for us because it was a good way for the developers, for example, to talk about the PostgreSQL tasks they wanted to update to the sysadmin team, which was doing the production deployment afterwards. Um, Sphinx, it's in RST, so it's uh, text-based and it's easier also for the developer to, um, to uh, put a new documentation along with their code as they commit it uh, along the way and its version and it can be commented. So it was also uh, very simple for us to present it to the developers. And uh, Jenkins Job Builder, it's also in YAML and we love YAML at Le Banquin. So it's, uh, it's a way to describe your, your Jenkins jobs uh, with uh, different steps. And uh, it's user-readable, which is nice. It's better than XML files. And also, it can be reviewed by other team members. So uh, you have a high maintainability, and also you can recreate it very easily in case your Jenkins instance is just dead. So we will continue with uh, Guillaume, who will present the 2017 year. Let's speak with the microphone. Um, as you may know, um, as you may see, sorry, uh, 2016 uh, 16 was about uh, formal tooling, but it was not enough as the company is still growing. So we need to find uh, another um, tools to scale our CI. So let's start. Our first idea was to manage more Jenkins slave workers. So at the beginning, it was working because uh, our master instance was strong, but uh, after some time, the Jenkins master was not um, performant, and the scheduler start um, lagging. So we try another ID, which was adding more master instances. So it's a good ID, but it's not working because Garrett is not able to manage the same label with different Jenkins master. So it was a good start, but not enough. So the solution was, tadam, Zool. So Zool was already used by um, OpenStack and Wikimedia Foundation. So it was working and in production. So it's a good point for us. Um, Zool is, uh, as you may know, it's a gating project system, which means you can run a uh, job in pipeline. I will speak about pipeline later. Um, and it's performant, so it's cool. Um, what? You say, um, with, uh, with Zool, you can uh, do serial gating, running job in parallel, so you can, have, uh, you can vote on different labels, so a lot of uh, features. Let's talk about pipelines. So if you already know the OpenStack um, CI, it's kind of the same pipeline. We have uh, three big type of pipelines. We have the check pipelines, we have a build pipelines for when you have a review on Garrett with new patches. Three pipelines are triggered. The first one is about build. So if your application is on Go, you build your Go binary. Um, the integration one was, is about um, testing the code with unit tests. And the last one is about quality, so to, uh, around the um, code linter or everything else. Um, once your change is merged, we have the post-merge pipeline. 
it's a simple pipeline only to build your application, upload the artifact, and also build and publish your documentation. And the last one is about tag. So if you, have, um, if you want to create tag directly on your Git repository, you can do it, and Zool, we at the same as the post-merge, will create and build and upload your artifact and documentation. So yeah, 2018 was the year of our next level up with Zool by switching to version three. So you may wonder why are we migrating to Zool v3? So there are several reasons. The first one is because it's scalable and distributed, which is uh, uh, good because it's easy to add uh, new components to follow the constant growth of the CI needs. Uh, the second one is because uh, now they are using uh, Ansible playbooks. And uh, at Le Bon Coin, we were already using Ansible, so there was no learning curve. We were already using YAML again. Yay. Um, there was no more Jenkins. So it was also good for us because uh, Jenkins instances were a bit of a pain point at this point. And uh, when we saw that you can reach the same result, but without having uh, this uh, brick in the stack, then why not? Um, also, there is uh, now a GitHub integration. Now you may wonder why we talk about GitHub, as previously we only talked about Gerrit. But uh, some of our teams in Le Bon Coin are using uh, GitHub. So uh, it can be a good opportunity to uh, uh, reunite everyone under the same CI2. And also, um, it's, uh, up to, uh, Zool v3 is more up to date because OpenStack was obviously uh, moving from v2 to v3. So why not follow them and uh, stay AG? And also, uh, Zool v3 is uh, community driven. So it's uh, way easier to uh, communicate with people, find them on, on IRC and have any information you want. So I will give uh, Benoit. Yes, so let's talk a little about Zool version 3. I know in the room that some people may already know how it's working, but uh, let's have a very quick look. Uh, first of all, what changed between the version 2 and version, and version 3? So first of all, Jenkins slaves are now replaced by an OpenStack cloud platform, so no jobs previously run on slave nodes are now run on virtual machines on uh, OpenStack. Um, as Sonia said, jobs are now executed uh, with Ansible playbooks, which is nice for us. And uh, over OpenStack Cloud platforms, there are another component, NodePool. NodePool is in charge of the virtual machines lifecycle, is in charge to keep a, a pool of virtual machines ready, and is able to provide it uh, to Zool. Zool is a component which uh, listens to Garrett's events and uh, read pipelines and launch jobs in consequence. So another nice thing is uh, that jobs can now be emptied directly in the code repo, so the developers are now able to write directly their own jobs, their own tests. So let's see how, like, let's have a little more detail about uh, Zool components. Uh, there are four main components uh, in Zool. The Zool web, which is in charge of displaying the graphical interface, UI. Uh, the Zool merger, which is in charge of git merging operations. The Zool executor, which is in charge of uh, executing Ansible playbooks on uh, virtual machines. And the Zool scheduler, which is a core component, which uh, is listening, gerate, and trigger jobs. Uh, under that, NodePool, so the component in charge of managing uh, the virtual machines pool on OpenStack Cloud Platform, we have two components. The builder is uh, the builder is building uh, images, so we specify what we want in a, in an image in an image. Sorry, and the launcher will uh, get the image build and start uh, a virtual machine on OpenStack Cloud Platform. What, how we, structure, we uh, set this in place at Le Bon Coin. So we have two on-premise data centers, so we decided to not really split, more duplicate uh, all the components. 
So we added to a web component, to scheduler, and more and more merger and executor, because it's an easy way for us to, to scale, to follow the, the company growth, for example, if the CI is struggling because there's too much jobs to execute, it's really easy for us to add a new merger or a new executor to handle the overcharge. And uh, we also wanted to be able to keep a CI fully working uh, in case of a data center loss. So even if we lose a data center, you'll see that we have all components in the other one, so it will, it will still be working. Now I'll let Sonia to tell you why we choose to migrate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Sorry. So uh, now you saw um, the, the big changes we did. Um, and there is a, an overview from just the beginning where we had only two tools, uh, two services, not, not a lot, and 2018 with all this uh, tooling. Uh, it's quite obvious that this follows also the increase of the number of developers in Le Mans Coin because at the beginning we were like 50 developers and then 150, so we had to adapt. And uh, along the way we increased the developer satisfaction because now everything is more flex flexible, it's more sustainable. And also we increased our own satisfaction because uh, the system is now more robust and more coherent and more maintainable than before. And also we learned uh, a lot of things, uh, a lot of trials and errors, and it's always nice to, to know that you improve your knowledge. So now, Guillaume will talk about the tips and tricks to achieve this. Thank you. So with this long journey, we have learned some tips and tricks. So the first one, and on my side, the most important is read the documentation and the code repository. Um, OpenStack have a lot of repository with inside uh, all information about how to set in Zool or using it. So feel free to, to read them. Um, one of the tips should be explicit naming convention. It means uh, name your job inside here with the same prefix, for example, as your pipeline. It's easier to find them. About monitoring and graph, it's very important to have it. With this, uh, with this tool, you can uh, um, find some, uh, some uh, problems or uh, improve your, uh, your CI. Um, benchmarking also is also important. Uh, as we start, uh, when we start the, um, the, Zool, the Zool V3 migration, we start with a, with a proof of concept. So it was important for us to, to benchmark if, if you need some CPU, RAM, and other stuff like that. Um, as Zool V3 is now a, really a, a real project with a, a real open source project, Feel free to keep in touch with the team on IRC. It's very important, and it, you save a lot of time also. And uh, as each company has a legacy of other uh, boring stuff, fine-tuning of tooling is authorized. You can set your legacy stuff with, uh, with Zool. It's working. So that's for the tips and tricks, and thank you. <laughs> and if you have some questions, feel free, feel free to ask. Thank you. No question? <laughs> so, okay. Uh, regarding OpenStack, what projects are you using? And uh, when you build uh, or when you test, uh, do you create a full environment of your website, uh, including network? About OpenStack component, we are using the classic one. No, only compute uh, networks and uh, the classic platform. And about Le Bon Coin, it's different. We have our, our legacy, it's building all the sites with uh, all components. It's like a monolith, it's not very interesting. But now, as we are working with microservices, we are just building and testing these microservices and dependencies. Other question? No. Thank you.